NYPD finals debating competition. We have been going for over 12 years, sorry, 10 years, and tonight is the 10th edition of the NYPD debating competition. That is the group formed at Campus B, and of course, we deem ourselves as the breeding ground for the senior debating team. Tonight, we have a very special topic, and we have four very special young people who are ready and raring to go. These people have been debating from since the middle of the second term. They have won at least five debates, and now we have the creme de la creme. This is the cream of the crop, and tonight they are fighting for the whole hog. And so, I think they are ready, they are ready to go. But before we continue, I would like to take a quick look and acknowledgement of our sponsors for tonight. Uh, you know that in these trying times, sponsorship is extremely important. And there are some persons, some businesses that have been corporate citizens and have kindly consented to sponsor not only the trophies, but also the eats as well as all the other paraphernalia that we need for tonight. I want to extend a very special thank you to Mr. Perron Supersad, who was our first sponsor for this year. Also, thanks to Mr. Lowell Hughes, Sunset Homes, Exotic, Exotic Hair and Beauty Supplies, MV Mr. Ray, Anguilla Air Services, Alex Richardson and Associates, Mr. Linwood Bell, Ashley and Sons, Mr. Samuel Webster, the Honorable Mr. Victor Banks, Premier Taxi and Tours, Mrs. Paula Connor, Miss, Miss Annette Duncan, and last but not least, Lime. All these persons have seen it fit to support the youth tonight. Put your hands together for all our sponsors. Make some more noise. Yes, it's time to wake up because it's business tonight. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for our sponsors because without you, tonight's proceedings would not have been possible. And at this point, I'm going to introduce our three judges. We start with, start on our, our left, and you're right, with judge number one, Ulu Fumiki Banks Devanish. I want to introduce her yet. She is a 22-year-old student, and has, she has just obtained her Bachelor of Arts Honor Degree in Psychology from Trent University in Petersburg, Ontario. She graduated from the Albina Lake Hodge Comprehensive School in 2007 with 10 CXC subjects, grades 1s and 2s, and obtained her associate degree in humanities from Cape in 2009. During her years at the Albina Lake Hodge Comprehensive School, she displayed her passion for debating by competing in many competitions, including the Leeward Islands Debating Competition in St. Martin in 2009, where she was awarded Best Speaker for the night, for night one. She also served one term as Vice President for the Albina Lake Hodge Comprehensive School Literary and Debating Society. She enjoys public speaking and is now and is no stranger to the stage. She now holds the title of Miss Anguilla 2011-2012. Let's hear it for our judge number one, Miss Olofuniki Banks Devanish. <laughs> judge number two. Dana Fleming is a recent graduate of the 2012 sixth form class. There she studied communication studies, Caribbean studies, literatures in English, art and design, information technology, and food and nutrition. Her passions include reading, drawing, and writing. She represented Anguilla in the Leeward Islands debating competition for two consecutive years 
and she was successful on both occasions. She was also a member of the NYPD while she attended Campus B. Put your hands together for judge number two, Sister Dana Fleming. And our third judge, Tamari Mitchum, is a recent graduate of the six, of sixth form class of 2012 at the Albina Lake Hodge Comprehensive School. She was an active member of both the NYPD during her first and second form years and also the Literary and Debating Society. She, was, she, part, she has participated in the NYPD debates and this year the Police Week debate. This vibrant young lady one day hopes to become a lawyer. Put your hands together for our third judge, Ms. Tamari Mitchum. <laughs> While you are at it, I'm going to take a quick look at our criteria for tonight, tonight's debate. For presentation, we have five points. Correct grammatical use, we have five points. Fluency, we have five points. Dictation and clarity, five points. Facts and information, 10 points for a total of 30 points. While we are at it, I want to remind you of tonight's mood. The mood for tonight reads, technological advancement has had a more negative than positive impact on the Anguillian society. At this point, I take great pleasure in introducing our speakers for tonight. On my right, we have the leader of the proposition, Ms. Shakela Carti. And she will be ably supported tonight by Mr. Juan Dupuis. Our opposition tonight, on my left, we have our first speaker being Ariel Gaskin. Put your hands together for Ariel. And tonight, she will be ably supported by Priska Ogolo. Put your hands together for our four debaters tonight. I would like to, at this moment, acknowledge the presence of Upbeat Radio, Radio Anguilla, just Vic and Associates. I would also like to acknowledge the Anguillian. Is that right, Mr. The Anguillian? And so therefore, we are widely covered tonight. There are persons who are following us online and on radio. And at this point, I think we are just about ready to get down to the nitty gritty. Judges, are we ready? Pardon my mishap, but I would like to introduce also our timekeeper, the smiling Kevin Thompson. Put your hands together for our timekeeper for tonight. And I must read the rules, they're very simple. But you need to know them before we start. The first speaker of the proposition speaks for eight minutes, followed by the first speaker of the opposition, who will also speak for eight minutes. The second speaker of the proposition speaks for six minutes. The second speaker of the opposition will speak for six minutes. A total of one point will be deducted from each speaker for every 30 seconds over the allotted time. I repeat, a total of one point will be deducted from each speaker for every 30 seconds over the allotted time. There will be no rebuttal. The team with the highest total will be the tonight's winner. At the end of it all, the person with the highest individual score will be the best speaker for tonight. I would just like to note also that the overall best speaker will not be judged tonight, 
but it's accumulation of best speaker awards over the term and a half that we have been debating. Let's get ready to rumble, my friends. At this point, I'm going to ask you to put your hands together and welcome speaker number one, leader of the proposition, Miss Shakela Kati, as she debates the topic, technological advancement has had a more negative than positive impact on the Anguillian society. Put your hands together and welcome to the podium, Shakela Kati. Mr. Mr. Moderator, impeccable judges, my most eloquent opponents, listening and viewing audience, a very pleasant good evening. I rise in full support of the MOOC. Technological advancement has had a more negative than positive impact on the Anguillian society. Before I launch my all-out attack of facts and information, please permit me a few precious moments to define the key terms of the MOOC. According to the Oxford Study Dictionary, technology is defined as scientific inventions. Advancement is defined as progress. Negative is defined as bad. Impact is defined as influence, while society is described as people. Mr. Moderator, although many will use and publicize modern technology for many of its advancements and achievements, what many don't realize is that it has affected and continues to affect society and people in general in a negative way. Let me state in no uncertain terms from the beginning that my colleague and I believe that modern technology is a good thing. However, in Anguilla, the misuse and abuse of modern technology have undoubtedly impacted Anguilla in a very negative way. Firstly, Mr. Moderator, and perhaps the most disturbing, is the fact that modern technology has become some people God in Anguilla. Their whole lives revolved around it. Some cannot even survive a few minutes without it. So some Anguillians, the cell phones, iPads, computers, and tablets dominate their lives. They worship these gadgets, and everyone and everything else around them becomes second nature. What is even worse, Mr. Moderator, is that many of them are addicted to these gadgets, and they don't even realize it. This, Mr. Moderator, is a sad and dangerous thing. The cell phones in particular are like a cancer, infecting and poisoning Anguillians from all walks of life. From the newborn baby to the old and needy, all of them have the cell phone disease. Mr. Moderator, it is a good thing that one cannot contract AIDS from cell phones. For if it was so, every single Anguillian would have died from AIDS already. Mr. Moderator, I am sure that there are some people in the crowds on their cell phones at this exact moment. You see, Mr. Moderator, this is a very sad thing. Secondly, Mr. Moderator, I truly believe that the advancement of modern technology has had a negative impact on the Anguillian society because it has made us become very antisocial. Mr. Moderator, I used to always hear my grandmother boast of how Anguilla had such strong family structure. According to her, and I quote, families used to spend quality time together. We used to play together, walk together, eat together, and pray together, unquote. Mr. Moderator, those days have gone out of the window. Since the introduction of modern technology, such as the computers, iPhones, and tablets, the Anguillian family life have deteriorated and have been destroyed. Parents, children, and siblings spend more time on their phones than talking to each other. They have become detached and disconnected. Even at dinner, everyone is armed with either an iPod or a cell phone. In many homes, it is like an anti-social warfare. Mr. Moderator, even the way Anguillians today interact with their friends and families is disgusting. 
they prefer to text or BBM them good morning rather than telling it to their faces. Mr. Moderator, according to the Idan Carcon in the article entitled The Negative Effects of Advancing Technology on Society, and I quote, Technology has its benefits, but when you take a look at how it has affected society in general and how people interact with one another, you will quickly see that it has a negative impact, unquote. Mr. Moderator, the fact is people do not interact personally with one another as often as they used to. This has created a barrier in personal face-to-face -face communication. Some people in Angola have totally lost their socialization skill as a result of the advancement of modern technology. Everyone has seen the movie with drunk kid with music blasting out of his earplugs or the girl rapidly texting on her phone. The youths of today are constantly immersed in technological advancements that promote non-stop communication and instant gratification. Mr. Moderator, I believe that the growth of technology has negatively influenced the social interaction of today's youth because it isolates individuals from reality, hinders communication, and perpetuates the concept of immediate satisfaction. Technology hinders personal communication, which negatively impacts our age group. Bob Afonso said in his article, name, it's the internet affecting the social skills of children, and I quote, data shows that those who use the internet frequently spend over 100 minutes less time with friends and families than non-internet users, unquote. Finally, Mr. Moderator, over the past few weeks, Angola has been rocked by a dramatic increase in crimes, violence, and murder. Many people are pointing fingers and casting the blame at the police. But I believe if you carefully examine this issue, you will soon realize that the advancement of modern technology have greatly influenced and promoted criminal behaviors. Many of our young people spend countless hours playing violent video games and listening to music that promotes sex, profanity, and killing. In addition, many gang members use their cell phones to plan and execute many of these crimes. Mr. Moderator, the cell phone and the computer by themselves may be innocent and insignificant. But when these gadgets are placed into the hands of the wrong individuals, they are as dangerous as weapons of mass destruction. It is obvious that the majority of Angolians use technology for the wrong reasons. As a result of this, the advancement of modern technology has become a deadly weapon to Anguillians. Mr. Moderator, even though I love my computer, I adore listening to music on my iPod, and I am very passionate about my cell phone, I must remain resolute in complete support of the mood. Technological advancement has had a more negative than positive impact on the Anguillian society. I thank you. That was Ms. Shakela Kati as she supported the argument technological advancement has had a more negative than positive impact on the Anguillian society. And she spoke for a time of 7 minutes 38 seconds. At this point, we shall now turn our attention to the first speaker of the opposition to oppose the argument, technological advancement has had a more negative than positive impact on the Anguillian society. Put your hands together and welcome to the podium, Miss Ariel Gaskin. Mr. Moderator, distinguished judges, my most intelligent opponents, listening audiences, ladies and gentlemen, a very pleasant good evening. I come before you in total opposition to the moot. 
technological advancement has had a more negative than positive impact on the Anguillian society. Before I proceed with my argument, please allow me a few minutes to define the key terms of the moot. The Webster Study Dictionary defines technological as scientific, advancement as improvement, negative as harmful, positive as helpful, impact as effect, and it defines society as community. Mr. Moderator, Queen Elizabeth in her 2010 Commonwealth Day message said, quote, Today's societies are constantly seeking new ways to improve their quality of life. Science and technology play a vital role in that search, unquote. Mr. Moderator, society has always been impacted by technology. Each invention has affected how people relate to one another and how cultures are expanded. Technology has not only increased human lifespan, but also how we live, where we live, how many there are of us. Mr. Moderator, whether we like it or not, technology is improving at a very fast rate. And what people did not even think could be possible a few years ago is now becoming reality. Cell phones act more like computers. Laptops and iPads have taken the world by storm. People could not imagine what it would be like if they didn't have the internet, their cell phones, and chat features at their disposal. TV, movies, music, and even video games have evolved, and each one of them offers consumers a wide array of choices and possibilities. Mr. Moderator, thanks to the advancement of modern technology, Anguilla can connect and interact with the rest of the world just by the press of a button. It is now much easier for Anguillians to access and share information about the rest of the world and for the rest of the world to learn about Anguilla. This is especially important since Anguilla's main industry is tourism. In this regard, not only is technology vital to the promotion of Anguilla as a fantastic tourist destination, but it is also essential for tourists who travel to Anguilla to stay connected with their families, businesses, and friends at home. Additionally, the advancement of modern technology has made travel between Anguilla and the rest of the world much easier and efficient. Mr. Moderator, another very important and significant use of modern technology is the promotion and advertisement of special events, shows, meetings, and alerts. Take tonight's debates finals for instance. Many persons use their cell phones and the internet to invite people to come out and support tonight's event. Many organizations use the internet and cell phones to broadcast hurricanes a lot in special important messages and warnings to the Anguillian public. Mr. Moderator, do not underestimate the power of modern technology. Mr. Moderator, thanks to the technological advancement, conducting business had become, has become much easier, much more economical, and much less time consuming. Anguillians can now bank, shop, and pay most of their bills online. Gone are the hassles of shop and doing business the slow and old-fashioned way. Mr. Moderator, who wants to go back to the agonies of waiting for snail mail to arrive? Would our opponents suggest that we go back to washboards instead of washing machines, replace our microwaves with coal pots and our cars with donkeys? Mr. Moderator, do not be misled by my opponents who may say that a computer and a cell phones has made us antisocial. How can that be when we use these same computers and cell phones to build and maintain social networks internationally, regionally, and locally? Mr. Moderator, in Anguilla, many persons have become attached to their cell phones. Not only do they use them for entertainment and for accessing and sharing information, but also they need them to stay in contact with their families and friends in case of emergency. Many are here tonight 
with their cell phones to call their relatives to pick them up after tonight's debate. I am positive that even my naive opponents have come here tonight with their debates. Do you know why, Mr. Moderator? It makes them feel safer, and they needed to let their relatives know where they are at all times, especially now that Anguilla is in experiencing an increase in crime and violence. This is surely more positive than negative for our society, Mr. Moderator. Mr. Moderator, my opponents may want to tell you that the advancement of modern technology has made Anguillians lazy. But nothing could be further from the truth, Mr. Moderator. Tracy P. Alloway, in her article, Keep in Mind, responds to the question, Is technology making our brains lazy? She responded, and I quote, No, I would suggest that it is making us more efficient, end quote. She went on to state, quote, In a modern working place where multitasking is standard, technology can give us an edge. The old school way of remembering facts and information is not needed. With Google at our fingertips, we don't need to, end quote. Finally, Mr. Moderator, on the surface, the advancement of modern technology may seem to have more negative effects than positive. This is because in Anguilla, we tend to highlight the negative and ignore the positive. Instead of looking at a few isolated incidents in discussing this issue, we need to look at the big picture. We aren't only concerned with the misused Blackberries, the addictive video games, or the intriguing iPads. Don't forget, Mr. Moderator, technological advancement has occurred across many fields, be it transportation, communication, administration, manufacturing, or entertainment. Having looked at the big picture, I am afraid I am left with absolutely no choice but to stand firm in refuting my opponent's arguments that technological advancement has had a more negative than positive impact on the Anguillian society. I thank you. That was Ariel Gaskins as she opposed the argument that technological advancement has had a more negative than positive impact on the Anguillian society. And she spoke for a time of 7 minutes and 35 seconds. We now move our attention to the second speaker of the proposition to support the argument technological advancement has had a more negative than positive impact on the Anguillian society. Put your hands to po together and welcome to the podium, Mr. Tuan Dupuy. Mr. Moderator, eminent judges, my most awesome Precious opponents, listening audience, good evening. I now have the rather exciting task of continuing the information and factual onslaught in full support of the moot, technological advancement has had a more negative than positive impact on the Anguillian society. Mr. Moderator, let me begin by reiterating what my partner stated earlier. I do agree that the advancement of modern technology has had a more negative than positive usage. Mr. Moderator, the uses of, the, of cell phones and the internet are perfect examples of how Anguillians have used modern technology negatively. In Angola, people have used modern technology to, pro to promote propaganda and circulate false information while many Anguillians refuse to broadcast positive events on their cell phones. When something positive occurs in Angola, very few persons see fit to post it on Facebook. But as soon as something negative happens, but as soon as something negative happens, most persons are quick to circulate it on their cell phones, and it's all over Facebook. School children especially enjoy videotaping fights and circulating them in order to expose and embarrass the victims. 
In addition, many Angolans enjoy videotaping persons engaging in sexual activities and then posting, it, then posting them on Facebook to scandalize these individuals. This, Mr. Moderator, is not only disgusting, but it is also very dangerous. Just a few months ago in America, a student videotaped his roommate engaging in homosexual act, act with a partner. He posted the video on Facebook, and his roommate got so depressed and ashamed that he committed suicide. The same thing could happen here in Angola if we continue this silly act. Additionally, Mr. Moderator, just recently after the brutal stabbing in Island Harbor, some malicious persons sent around a false picture of the victim with a more grotesque wound than what he really received. This only served to make others angrier and to increase the tension among families and friends. Mr. Moderator, in addition, persons have used modern technology to rob, cheat, and blackmail others. A few months ago, some thieves were captured by the police trying to use modern technology to rob the ATM machine at one of our local banks. Mr. Moderator, in spite of the many advantages of the advancement of modern technology, our school children have become more distracted by this. They spend so much time on the phone and computers wasting time that they can hardly find to do their homework or to study. They, some stay up all night texting, chatting, emailing, or even exchanging BBM messages. The next day, they are so tired that they walk around the school like zombies, or they, walk, or they spend so much time in class sleeping. The advancement of modern technology has even changed the way Anguillians talk and write. Many of them have become so accustomed to the computer and phone shortcuts in spelling that they can hardly spell or write correctly anymore. As a result, the standard of writing in school, or even in the CXC and CAPE exams, has fallen dramatically. O-M-G, LOL. Mr. Moderator, advancements in technology have also greatly affected certain sectors of the industry and have even forced certain businesses to shut down permanently because there is no more demand for the type of work. Additionally, many persons have been replaced by computers. Mr. Moderator, do you remember those movies that talk about the future? in how you wouldn't have to lift a finger to do anything? Well, in Anguilla, we are almost in this timeline now. If you sit back and really think, really ponder how things have changed and what we do differently, you'll just see how lazy we really are now, from online banking to internet shopping to paying bills online. Why do you even have to leave the house? Some just stay inside, stay online, stay overweight and unhealthy. No wonder more than half the population. That's exactly what modern technology has done to us here in Angola. No wonder more than half the population suffers from obesity. Finally, Mr. Moderator, computers, cell phones, and iPods have caused an increase in accidents in Angola. Some cars now have DVD players, and many drivers are distracted by watching movies while they drive. In addition, many Angolans drive while they are using their cell phones. They sometimes lose concentration, and this results in very serious and sometimes fatal accidents. Mr. Moderator, the truth is in Anguilla. The people have no respect for how, where, and when they use their cell phones. They answer them in church, in class, in meetings, and in functions, like tonight's competition. Mr. Moderator, technology is a privilege to have but interaction with other people is crucial. And, let, and being responsible for one's action in not letting technology rule his or her life is better than becoming desensitized to society. Mr. Moderator, in Angola, we have become almost totally dependent on technology. Depending on technology can be very risky. Failures in technological infrastructure can cause a collapse of social and economic and social functions. Mr. Moderator, my colleague and I have presented the facts. We have thoroughly discussed this issue and we remain convinced beyond any shadow of a doubt that technological advancement has had a more negative than positive impact on the Anguillian society. I thank you.
That was Mr. Juan, Juan Dupuy as he supported the argument that technological advancement has had a more negative than positive impact on the Anguillian society. And he spoke for a time of six minutes and 23 seconds. This now brings us to the second and the final speaker of the opposition to oppose the argument technological advancement has had a more negative than positive impact on the Anguillian society. Put your hands together and welcome to the podium, Ms. Priska Ogolu. Everybody can see me, right? <laughs> Mr. Moderator, honorable judges, my most worthy opponents, listening and viewing audience, a very pleasant good evening. I now rise to give full support to my colleague, in total opposition to the advancement of the argument that technological advancement has had a more negative than positive impact on the Angolian society. Mr. Moderator, technological advances show people how to do things and these processes get results. For example, Education has been greatly improved by the technological advances of computers. Students are able to learn on a global scale without ever leaving their classrooms or houses. In addition, many adults are now able to stay at home and pursue their careers in whatever field of endeavor instead of having to further their education abroad in colleges and universities. Thanks to the computer, Angolians can now further their education via online courses. In addition, some classroom teachers are using overhead projectors and the whiteboards to make their classes much more exciting and entertaining. In fact, Students are allowed to bring their laptops in order to access and process information that will enhance their learning. Mr. Moderator, as a result of the advancement of modern technology, discoveries occur at a much more rapid rate. Machines and computers have aided the research process and allowed for more intense educational research into medical matters. As a result of this, many Anguillians and persons living in Angola are receiving improved medical services which have helped to reduce illness, minimize diseases, and eradicate some sicknesses. Additionally, Thanks to the advancement of modern technology, Anguillians can now benefit from improved medicine and superior treatment. Mr. Moderator, it is amazing how many things can be done online today. Web seminars by special groups and organizations are held in order to save time and money. Even charitable organizations such as Red Cross and Rotary Club receive online donations in order to support and fund their groups and projects. Mr. Moderator, if people from Angola are benefiting from all these technological advancements, how can my most intellectual opponents sit there and support this argument with a clear conscience? Mr. Moderator, my most cautious opponents might want to suggest to you that most people in Angola will misuse and abuse modern technology. Oh, please, give me a break. This accusation is totally false, whereas a small portion of the Anguillian population may misuse and abuse modern technology, a large portion of the population still use their cell phones, computers, and iPads for positive gains. 
Even so, Mr. Moderator, because a few in the society abuse the privilege of modern technology, does that mean that it has negative impacts on the society? If you ask me, Mr. Moderator, there is absolutely nothing wrong with modern technology. But there is something fundamentally wrong with people who will use anything they could get their hands on negatively in order to fulfill their own selfish needs. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Probably you couldn't. Probably you couldn't. Thanks to this technological wonder called the microphone, you would have to shout. Besides, ladies, gentlemen, look around you. How many technological things do you see? The use of the credit card has been efficient in society. Instead of walking around with bulky loads of cash, cha-ching, you just use a tiny card. Cool, right? Tell me about it. Sir, can you imagine what life would be like without online commerce like Amazon? It would be absurdly exorbitant and tedious to say the least. Can you afford the trip abroad to buy a good camera, another technological wonder? Imagine the cost inclusive of customs duties and you know how customs in Angola is. Hmm, Lord have mercy. Mr. Moderator, do you know what the temperature is today? It is 85 degrees Fahrenheit. How do I know, you may ask? Technology at the airport roundabout, of course. My verbally cunning opponent and your esteemed self would not have stayed here a good five minutes listening to any of us in the sweltering heat had we not had the benefit of this modern technological wonder called an air conditioner. Thank God. Mr. Moderator, you look pretty smart this evening. I suppose your clothes were not hand washed and just put on like that, but rather they were machine washed and ironed crisp with the aid of an electric and most likely steam iron. Thanks to the electric iron, we aren't here at this august occasion looking like ragamuffins. Mr. Moderator, thank God for the toothbrush and Colgate toothpaste. They are products of modern technology. Imagine how our verbally cunning opponents would have looked, including myself, if we didn't have the benefit of the toothbrush. There would not be any smiling faces here. Self-esteem would be at an all-time low. Why? Stinky, rotten teeth. Mr. Moderator, bank tellers have a fixed, usually eight-hour shift and as such cannot serve us all through the day. When a monetary need arises at odd hours, for instance, a child falls sick at night and has to be rushed to the hospital, the modern technological wonder of the ATM comes to the rescue. That is, assuming you have money in the bank. What do you do? Call an NBA teller to come open the bank? Go to the closed bank? Of course not. You either drive to the main branch, rum can, Sid and Palm Plaza, the airport, Island Gases, Tomac Plaza, or the West End drive through You don't call a teller. That's old school. Wake up. It's the 21st century, not the 50s. Mr. Moderator, how could anyone in his or her right mind even dare to suggest that the advancement of modern technology has had a negative impact on the Angolian society. Unless a person is blind, deaf, and dumb, I am absolutely sure that he or she will join me in refuting my opponent's arguments that technological advancement has had a more negative than positive impact on the Angolian society. I humbly rest my case. That was Ms. Priska Ogulu as she opposed the argument, technological advancement has had a more negative than positive impact on the Anguillian society. And she spoke for a time of 
eight minutes and five seconds. That has brought us to the official closing of the debate. And while the judges are escorted to their private compartment to do the tabulations, we shall speak. And I specially designed this one way so I can come down and interact with you. And I can show my legs and look good. And so I want to hear your views on tonight's debate without calling names, as well as I would also like to know your views on whether or not you think that modern technology has negatively or positively impacted the Anguillian society. But just before I do that, I would like to once again acknowledge our sponsors, Mr. Perron Supersad, Mr. Lowell Hughes, Sunset Homes, Exotic Hair and Beauty Supplies, MV Mr. Ray, Anguilla Air Services, Alex Richardson and Associates, Mr. Linwood Bell, Ashley and Sons, Mr. Samuel Webster, the Honorable Mr. Victor Banks, Premier Taxi and Tours, Mrs. Paul O'Connor, Miss Annette Duncan, and Lime. Once again, put your hands together for our sponsors. And don't forget, after the prize giving, and you notice these wonderful trophies we have here tonight, thanks once again to our sponsor. Before you leave, you will be refreshed. But before you can refresh, we got to talk. Um, do I have a cordless mic? Mr. Gaff, and I am not going to wait on you people to give your views. I'm going to call directly on Jada to start the ball rolling tonight. She has been one of our most vibrant debating students, and she always has something to say. And tonight she's going to say for us. Put your hands together for Jada. Give Jada the mic. Hello, good afternoon. Um, I would like to say that both the proposition and the opposition did well. But I agree with the proposition. Because I think that the youths nowadays are always on cell phones, iPads in technology. I think it's taking over how we socialize with our friends. Usually we meet somewhere and talk to our friends verbally, but usually we are texting on the phone or something. But um, that's basically all I have to say. Thank you very much. Put your hands together for Jada. Yes? Anybody else? You just say, well, don't try that, you know, don't hold your head down. Yes, Mr. David over here. And David has been one of our vibrant judges throughout the whole uh, term and a half. Put your hands together for our judge here, Brother David. Good night, everybody. Um, firstly, I would like to congratulate all the debaters, not just for tonight, but for throughout the competition. Job well done. Uh, my view on the topic is that, like all things in life, there's a good side and a bad side. And like one of the debaters said, the technology isn't bad. It's just the person who is controlling it. After all, a uh, knife in the hands of a chef is the same thing as the knife in the hands of a murderer. And knife is a knife. Put your hands together for David. And he believes that there is nothing at all wrong with modern technology but there is something wrong with the people that abuse it. Mr. Mr. Hill, you're shaking your head. What do you think, sir? You're a technological man. Come on, talk to me. 
Hi, good evening, everyone. Very, very high quality um, debate. I was particularly moved by the first speaker um, of the opposition. And uh, although I disagree, I was almost taken over by her um, enthusiasm and, and, and points that she presented. Um, as I would like to support the, um, the, the work that you, they are doing, I, I really thought that they did a very good job almost memorizing their, their um, debates. That's a very, very good skill. So I think you've been doing an excellent job in commenting on technology as a tool, tools are tools. They, they help us to meet our goals and mediate our, our means of doing things. And obviously, they can be used for doing bad things as well. So I, I, we can't do without tools. All right? Simply said. But do you think that the negative uses in Angola outweighs the positive uses? No. OK, so he is with modern technology. Put your hands together for Mr. Hill, a technological man. Anybody else? Teacher Sarah, don't you dare put your head down there. Oh, yes, yeah, sister here. I'm coming back to you, sis. Put your hands together for Sister Niles. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to congratulate the debaters for getting me this far. The debate was great. On the topic, on the topic, if we all look around now, all we see is technology, technology, technology. I don't think any one of us could imagine how life would be if we were back in the old days on a washboard, in no machine, in a lantern. I just think that technology has brought us this far and we just have to be thankful for it. Put your hands together for Sister Niles. You know something? I've heard from the younger ones. You know they're going to support technology. But I wonder, I wonder what the, the older people that used to use the washboard and used to use bicycle instead of cars. I wonder, Miss Fleming, I wonder what you think. Come, come, come here, Miss Fleming. Tell me what you think about. Miss Fleming, come. Tell me what you think about modern technology. I'm not saying that you're old, you know. I'm just telling that you are matured. Come here and talk to me. Come, sis. I sailed by the bell. Good night, everyone. Um, congratulations to the debaters. I can't see modern technology um, working without reverting back, in most cases, to um, the olden days. Because there are sometimes my children, they will be doing something that they considered modern, but the base of it is from the olden days. And most of the old folks will know, or the older of us will know, that sometimes um, when they're trying to use their little gadgets, sometimes we will just take up a knife and, and that's it, and it works. So you can't have the modern technology with most times reverting back to olden technology. So you can't completely erase what we call the olden days. It still always remains. Thank you very much. And his family has gotten the courage to stand. Good evening, everyone. First of all, I wish to commend all the debaters. I think they did an excellent job. Obviously, they were well prepared, well researched. Well, I'm from old school. I am of the opinion that modern technology has done more bad in many cases on the Angolan society. I know there's a lot of good, don't get me wrong. I do appreciate the iron, the telephone, the washing machine. However, if you were in a school setting like I am, you would understand where I'm coming from. Modern technology has been abused in many instances by our school children. Sometimes parents think their children are up in the night researching and doing homework. Instead, they are doing all kind of wrong things, posting it to their friends, and next day in school, we have all kind of a disagreement because of the abuse 
of the modern technology. What I'm saying, I like the modern technology, but most individuals, many individuals, sorry, not most, many individuals in Anguilla, especially school children, are abusing this modern technology, which I'm sure can be used for good. Thank you. Good night, everybody. That was my cousin, Mercedes, from back in the old days. And she did use the washboard and all those type of things. But I'm from the modern days. And I totally disagree with Mercedes. All she said just now has nothing to do with technology. It has to do with how we use the technology. And how our parents are not managing the kids. And how we let our kids do what they want. It has absolutely nothing to do with the technology. And I'm amazed that we have subtly, subtly taken that small, bad um, way that some of our kids have used the technology and spread that totally to just dismantle all the technology. Now, when we walk down the street, for example, we have people walking amongst us who are taking drugs for HIV and AIDS who would have been dead 20 years ago. Modern technology. People who are living and working in society, fruitful lives. I'm not going to say who they are because I don't know who they are. But back 15, 20 years ago, once you have HIV, within two, three years, you were dead. And HIV was impacting the productive sector of our community. The teachers, the doctors, the lawyers, between ages 15 and 35. No! You can live with HIV almost until your 50, 60, 70, an entire perfect life. We're now saving our teachers, we're now saving our doctors, we're now saving our lawyers, we're now saving our construction workers, we're now saving our garbage workers because of HIV medication. Modern technology. So I think if we use that rather um, closed and small and very, um, what should I say? A narrow-minded way of how our kids are using modern technology, it totally misses the entire argument. Anguilla and this world is much better off because of modern technology. We heard from the old school and we heard from the new school. Uh, they look like the in-between school. Yes, good night. Thank you probably call me in between. Uh, first off, let me thank the debaters. Tonight I think they did a very wonderful job. Um, I think I'm going to go with the proposition on this one. Uh, mainly for the fact that in Anguilla, and I'm going to stay within Anguilla, that um, technology has done us a lot of good. Um, as we have been taught in school throughout the years, Way back when, I wouldn't call it date because I sure be incorrect on that one, but there was a point in Anguilla where there was a famine and there was a serious drought and the governors at the time were encouraging all of us to, you know, migrate to Guyana. Anguilla, compared to the other islands, is barren. You know, it's a, it's a rock. We can't do anything. But look at us today. We have a reverse osmosis plant that turns salt water into fresh water. Um, we have pretty much limited natural resources, but yet we get everything. We get uh, all the stuff that we need, you know, the bread, the chicken, the meats, the fruits, the vegetables, stuff that could, be, you know, can't, stuff that can't hold up in this climate, in this environment now here but we use our resources, the telephone, the fax, the internet, all those stuff to import those stuff, those goods and services into the island. Uh, Anguilla is an island that is highly, and maybe the, the most um, technologically dependent island in the Caribbean based on the stuff that we do day to day. If we were to shut down the ports or to take out our internet infrastructure, our island would be crippled. So um, I think the good outweighs the bad. Um, in terms of the bad, it's just it's, uh, it's 
something social. It's, you know, it's how we handle it, it's how we train uh, individuals in the community to handle the new technology. And I'm sure it happens in every um, areas in society and other places. You give someone, someone a new toy, first off they abuse it, don't know how to use it properly, it's destroyed. You give it to them again, you know, they learn how to take care of it, handle it better. And you see this with little children, children all the time. So um, the phones and everything that we get today, we abuse them. But over the years, we learn to grow up and, you know, how to use them and use them properly. Put your hands together for Brother Otto. So Otto, let me get this right. You're saying that you agree that it has done more harm than good or more good than harm. More good than harm. So you agree with the opposition. I humbly apologize. Yes, do you want to hear my view? I heard from the old school. I think art is the new school. I believe I in between. I in between, neither old nor new. I just off the almanac. What I believe, first of all, I am not as technological as Aline and them people that can type a hundred miles per hour and can be them ten people at one time. I believe that on the negative side that even though there is nothing wrong with technology itself, I wouldn't even say the majority, I would say a large portion of Angolian are using the, techno the, the technology incorrectly. That is, they, they, they use it for more negative things than positive things. For example, one of the things that turned me off from the computer, every time somebody asked me to see something on a computer, it was always something negative. It was never something that I could learn. Like, come see this, Mr. Johnson. Come see this, come see this. It was either somebody in some... I wouldn't even say it. But it was generally something negative. And it's the same thing with um, the broadcast. I can't... I never send a broadcast in my life. That's why I asked the teachers and my students to send around the broadcast to broadcast tonight's event. But generally, when people send something to me, it's a dirty joke. And you know what? I don't even read broadcasts no more. I don't read forwards. However, in my daily work as a teacher, in 2012, it is almost impossible for you to survive not using technology. Not technology. We have to go up. We have to move with the times. We can't say that because we used to do it in the old time days that we have to do it still. Everything is moving on and we have to move on as we're going to be left behind. So I realize, and I used to be able to type at um, about 5 miles per hour, now I can type at 10 miles per hour. I realize that it's important for you to be able to utilize modern technology, not only for you to survive, but for you to be able to understand the people around you. Because all your children, gone! They're gone. How can you say whether they're doing something wrong? How could you catch up with them? How could, you, how could you monitor them when you don't understand what they're doing? So you know what? You got to learn about modern technology to keep up with them. So I kind of, I, I, I'm 50-50, but I kind of leaning on the side of technology. You know what kind of leaning on the, the, the side of technology? Because this is a technological world. But I dare to say a lot of us are misusing and abusing it. Nothing wrong with it, but a lot of us are using it incorrectly. And then the, the proposition made a very important point when they said, right, that it's a total disrespect that people have for these things, especially like the cell phones. I mean, before we had the cell phones, nobody could have called you out of an important meeting like tonight, but now, <laughs> hello? They're not even turning down the volume. And then, of course, even the ringtones. You can put almost any ringtone you want on the phone. But most of my students have some kind of dirty ringtone. And you know what they will do? They will ring it so that everybody can hear and laugh. You know why? They get attention. But then, that's only a few. What about the vast majority that really use it for something positive? When you look at the big picture, somebody mentioned it, right? We can't look at the small picture. The small picture is just a few. But in
in general, when we look at the advancement of um, technology in uh, the medical field, when we look at technology in, in terms of education, a lot of people don't even have to travel and leave their families behind now. They can get themselves educated right there in, 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 in their house. How can, you, how can you fight that people? However, a youngster wants something to say. You have some, what happened? I have said enough. Somebody, somebody give me a hand, please. Give me a hand. I said something good. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Timothy Hodge. Good, good evening. Um, I think it was an excellent debate. It was a well-constructed um, moot, which both sides could argue uh, very well. And I think both sides argued very well. I would have liked to see a little more on the society, the word society here. Um, because to me then, that brings in the interaction between people. Not just you can keep one person alive, like Foster said, or um, so forth. But how do people interact? And why I get telephone calls from within my house? And I got to pay for it. Um, I know Lime smiles about that, but I don't. So I think that little things like that, definitely, that could never be um, <laughs> a positive thing unless somebody is dying, which hasn't been the case. So, yes, there is, um, there are positives, of course. And we wouldn't, I mean, we've had many technological advances that we have discarded over time because we've gotten better at doing something. So, advancement is good and positive. I think it is how it is applied. And the question really was whether it is more positive are more negative than positive. Not whether it's useful or whether it's valuable, but what have been the effects on the society. And in terms of the society, going back to the old days, if you want to use that term, when we would sit around the coal pot and roast corn and talk and tell stories, nowadays, um, I don't know corn is, is, is um, done anymore. Um, so, I think that um, we've lost definitely a lot of the human interaction. I'd have liked to see that addressed a little bit more in the debate because I think that is where what society means. To me, society isn't just, um, society is the interaction of, of people together. And in the, in the interaction, yes, we have communication. I've done it tonight, I admit. I've done it. Right here, sitting here, I've been texting and BBing and all that kind of stuff. And it's not necessarily good. It's not necessarily a good thing because you get distracted. You, you're, not, you're not concentrating on what you should be concentrating on. It's not good manners. Um, fortunately tonight, I, I think I would like to congratulate our audience because I haven't heard any cell phone ring. It's about the first time that I've been to a public function in years that I haven't heard, heard a cell phone ring at a wrong, inappropriate time. So. Maybe we'll get, it, we'll get there and we will begin to be more considerate in our use of technology. Yes, technology is great, but I think we really have to be careful about how we use it as a society here in Angola. And I forgot about the cost. The cell phones, like we said, they cost a lot of money to the parents. Children, remember those things. Thank you very much. Put your hands together for Mr. Hodge. Our judge is taking a long time. That means things tight. Good night. Okay, I think tonight we have isolated modern technology to being cell phones and laptops alone and iPads and other modern gadgets. But modern things tend to clocks. Who would want to be going outside checking the time on a sundial? Seriously? Who would um who 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 would want to be walking around eating off a grape a grape leaf instead of plates in bowls in forks? Modern technology is not only cell phones and those things. Also, who would want to be wearing palm trees for clothes? We have evolved to wearing clothes. We do not want to go back to that. I think we need to look at what is technology mainly before we say that modern technology is bad. Let's see it for Ariel in her rebuttal. Oh, rebuttal just that. Okay, firstly, in the beginning, I stated that my 
colleague and I believe that modern technology is a good thing. What we are, however, advocating is that people misuse and abuse it and that who has affected Angola in a very negative way. We say that it's bad, we just say that the misuse and abuse of it is very negative. Some people use it in a positive way, some use it in a negative way, but to me, the negative outweighs the positive. Then we better start. This thing getting hot. The time I want a peace, but I got to go be a force. But then the big question is, how many people abuse and misuse technology? And then, uh, so how many people use it for their benefit? And it, some people, you may just see a few people abusing technology, but maybe it may seem like it outweighs the bad, but suppose, okay, like most of you work in offices. You earn income from offices. So, what are in offices? Technological things. Therefore saying, you wouldn't earn money from those technological things. Sitting at a computer eight hours a day and you expect not to earn money? Um, technology can be, is a wide range. Um, it, like my partner said, it's not just computers and cell phones and iPads, toothbrushes, soap, deodorant, and personal hygiene stuff, even chairs, tables. Everywhere we look, we see technology. Paint, clocks, those speakers, your cameras, your phones. And also, who, can anyone stand up here who is wearing a shell necklace with pure shells? Uh, fish teeth? Exactly. Oh, another point. Who in the hotel industry, living in the eastern part of the island, would walk from Island Harbor to Viceroy? Okay. One minute. Is that person old or young? Are you old or young, sis? In between, I have to go to my time, my timekeeper, because this thing getting hurt, they might fight. All right, good night. Um, I would like to commend all the debaters for a job well done and for making it this far. Um, however, from my point of view, um, there are pros and cons to everything, especially on the topic technology. Um, for example, the pros. Um, People, for example, if there wasn't an advance in technology, um, we would probably have this much people in the audience tonight because without a radio in the computer, then most of us would still be at home. And for the cons now, we know that people misuse technology, for example, posting explicit and illicit materials on the internet. So basically, it's kind of hard to decide which um, position to choose. Put your hands together for Kevin. A lot of people, even teachers say I want to talk, but the judge is ready and I'm hungry. I'm going to take two more. I'm going to take Brother Juwan and I'm going to take Teacher Sarah to wrap up. Tell me. What is the cost of modern technology? If you drive on a road and you see people on the side on them Blackberry phone or any phone and they're walking on the side of the road, don't know where they're going, then we'll get knocked down. So, then, in place doesn't have nothing to do with a modern technology. Clothes they have nothing to do with modern technology. Um, as someone said in the crowd, um, as the first speaker of the opposition said, who would walk it from East End to down West End? Um, back in the days, our ancestors did. If they do it, why can't we? The fact is, it has made us become very lazy, and that's why we don't want to do it. Oh, wait, who's copying the old people or the young people? I'm not walking from my Harbor, sorry. 
I saw you're not walking. I'm not walking. Technology and no technology. You walking? Good evening, everyone. Um, first, let me congratulate all the speakers, especially my first farmers. I have a slight bias. Do you understand the longest I've heard you talk in one day? I congratulate you. Now, um, let me stand. How far back do we go for modern? I should ask. Everything they're saying there, I grew up with it 46 years ago. So the advancement of modern technology, it has negatives, as most persons have the positives. I still have a look here. I miss out all the BBM messages and everything. The children laugh at me, but I am well informed because I go home and I use the computer. Today I was able to read how well Zanel did. I was able to also read a couple of weeks ago how well Shara did. So they are positives. The advancement of modern technology is very positive. What most persons have to zero in on is how it is used. Every day I watch Mr. Perry, which is a miracles with the advancement of modern technology in school. Don't we? Right, we do watch him do things that we will ne we'll never have tried later. So it's the use of it. And um, most of us, we are going to walk, if we must admit it, we will not walk 10 years ago. We won't be walking either. All these places from East End to, to uh, Viceroy or wherever, we'll try to get a bus or hitch a ride. We would not walk that distance. Just like oh, we're not going to walk it today, we would not walk it here. But the advancement of modern technology, and for most young folks, as the society grows, as society improves, there should be advancement, and we should agree that the use of it is what will decide if it's negative or if it's positive. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I would just like to wrap up by saying technology or no technology. You know what has impressed me? To see that a lot of young people turned out tonight to hear young people and to express their views, as well as a lot of the adults have turned out to support the, the, the young people and to hear the issues. And to me, that is more important than any technology. Put your hands together for yourself. Because I think that we need more forum like this. On Friday and Thursday, I went to West End Primary School and they were having debates. They had like four debates between uh, Road School, come give me the right name now, Adrian T. Hazel, and not West End, but Alwyn Allison Richardson. You better put on a Richardson. And the topics were very similar. But what was even better was the passion that they, they debated with. There was a girl called, I think it's Lecalisus, what's her name? Lucy Alice. Lord, she blew me away and I nearly faint. And then there was a boy there, he was so cool, calm and collective. And I would really love to see something like that done among all the primary school. So when they come to me, I have very little work to do. It was lovely. Thank you very much. Judges! Put your hands together for a head judge. It's decision time. Um, Beckylicious, I would like you to help me to distribute the prizes a little later. So get yourself ready, sister. Good evening. First of all, I would like to commend all of the debaters. We were truly blown away tonight. So give them a big round of applause. We believe that everyone did a fabulous job and we definitely see a lot of potential for the Leeward Islands debating competition. I was so surprised, and I'm not even underestimating. As soon as I heard the first words come out of the first speaker's mouth, I was taken aback. I was like, wow. So you guys are doing amazing. Teacher Colin, great job, and continue what you are doing. Just some general notes that we came up with. We wanted to commend all of the debaters on their delivery. Everyone delivered their material very well. 
the language, the use of language was spectacular. Some big words that I will have to go home and research myself. Good job for that. And we like to commend them on their eye contact. Um, their posture was also very good. Some of the debates we felt were more based on opinion and some were more fact related. And just general points for either side. We liked the proposition's ability to interact more because they didn't have to depend so much on the material. And we loved the opposition's use of, or sorry, their, their discussion about it being the use of technology as opposed to the actual technology. So those are just the general notes that we had. We also had a very important point. One of the speakers lost a significant amount of points because of the time. And at LIDC, that is also a very strict rule. So we just want to encourage all the debaters in the future, just make sure that you time your, pra your speeches, practice them so that you keep within the time. Again, good job. And I'll call back on Mr. Johnson to deliver the results. I am not looking at the results yet, but I have done a lot, a lot of these results. And generally, when I reach here, I know who win. I don't know who win tonight. That's the truth. You know who win? You all know who win? I look frightened by it. Okay. The proposition scored 126 points. And the opposition scored 138.5 points. And the best speaker being Ariel Gaskin. I would like you all to exchange handshakes, please. Could Sister Becky come forward? It's time for us to get down with the boogie. You could have a seat now. Stay there and look smart and educated. And now we have come to the, well, to me, the second most important part. Because the most important part was the debate. Now it's time to reward them for their efforts, as well as some of our other debaters. Um, Sister Haskins, we're going to start with the impromptu in the middle there in, in blue. So we're going to go, yes. At the start of our debating season, we started with an impromptu competition and we kept eliminating until we, le we were left with 12 and then we had a finals and the first five persons were awarded, well, will be awarded trophies. So, I'm going to start from position number five. And I hope they're here tonight because if they're not here, they're not getting it. Sorry. In fifth position in the impromptu competition, we have none other than Sister Tisani Rogers. Put your hands together for Tisani. Make sure you come forward and get a nice picture so you can show your grandchildren. Wait, hold on, wait. <laughs> in fourth position in the impromptu competition, we have Priska Ogolu. And in third position, in the impromptu competition 2012 for the NYPD, we have Chastiva Weatherroy. Come on down, Chastiva. And 
And in second position, we have none other than Jada Hughes. Come on down, Jada. Jada, I wonder how you get up. I might have to lift you up. No stage. Now, mud along the runway. And the winner of the 2012 impromptu competition, guess who? Ariel Gaskin. Put your hands together for Ariel Gaskin taking the whole hub. Then we move to the special prizes. Most improved. The most improved debater for 2012 goes to Eldisa Brooks. Put your hands together for Eldisa Brooks, who is not here. The best new debater, the rookie, rookie of the year, goes to Geraldine Harrigan. We have the most helpful debater. This is the person that helped me clean up after everything and helped me take down the podium and bring up the podium. Helped me to keep young. I don't think he's here tonight, is he? Mr. Nestor Brooks. Hi. You Nestor? Now, there are some persons who after every debate have something to tell us and they have not just participated but they have been to almost every single debate and for my most outstanding for most outstanding participation for year one I chose Sister Niles come on down Sister Niles how much knowledge do you have? And for year two, we have Sister Chastiva Weatherwoy. Put your hands again for Chastiva. Now we move to the placement, third place in the NYPD, and for the first time we have two first farmers reaching to the semi-finals, and they place third overall, we have Tisani Rogers and Migi Yorera. Come on down. And all those persons who receive prizes, I want you to come close. We're going to take a nice, cozy picture together. Second place in the NYPD 2012 debate go to Shakela Kati and... Juan Dupuy, put your hands together for our second place winners tonight.
and the NYPD champions for 2012, Ariel Gaskins and Priska Ogolo. And we come to our final two trophies. Best speaker year one goes to Juwan Dupuy. Why you left she behind? Look she there. Hello, <laughs> El. And the best speaker for year two goes to Ariel Gaskin. And just before I give the vote of thanks, I thank everybody. I would like all the prize winners to come up so we can have a nice cozy shot together. Come up with the trophies, please. Come up with the trophies. Come up and look smart. <laughs>